this and you're like, and then you tilt your head up, it's the butt right there. And it just, she just let it rip. And I was like, oh, that's the moment. That's the moment. I never did yoga next to that lady ever again. All right, well, I'm rolling. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Michael Alm and this is my shop. I've been in this space for five years now and it's taken about that long to feel comfortable in here, make sure that the workflow works. But at this point, I'm super happy and there's not a whole lot that I want to change. I just hit myself in the face. Cool thing about this space, it's, it's, a, it's a two car garage. It's about 415 square feet, but it also has 12 foot high ceilings. So I've got loads of room to build up. When I built my dust collection system, I was able to build that really high up on the wall. And same thing with my lumber storage. I, I was able to put that super high up so that I can store a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of materials that I don't have to use on a regular basis. So I figured a good place to start is with my oldest tools in the shop. I, I know looking at this shop, it looks like it's complete and you know it's a huge collection of tools, but really this started about 15 years ago when I, I bought tools off of Craigslist. This is a used chop saw that I've had forever and it's, it's great, it's super functional and there's still a couple of these old tools around that, uh, that still work really well in the shop. I also have my old original cabinets from, from my old shop. I never found a reason to change them. It's, it's funny, you can see them now. Uh, they're pretty janky. They're not well built at all. Um, and they're made uh, basically out of stuff that I found in the garbage. It's like one by twos and one by fours. And you know, I hinged them with basic hinges you get at the hardware store. And you know, it works. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time building shop furniture if, if I already have something that works. Um, so the way that these function, I've got both of them lined up together and a lot of woodworkers will do this in their chop saw stations, is they'll align the tool level. So this is level to this surface and it actually is, I think I can get a full eight foot run that way and about, I don't know, six feet this way. So the, the board can actually overhang um, pretty well. And, and so this is a workstation that I kind of use for quick work. I don't, I don't use it for a lot of precision stuff. For that, I, I use the table saw. When I first saw this shop, I noticed the giant garage door and this is awesome. It's an easy way for me to, to move material off of my car directly into the racks that I've built right here. And these are as close as I can get to my workbench as well. So I've got my foam cutting board here that I lay out and then I can lay a sheet of plywood on top of this and uh, immediately start breaking it down before it goes over to the table saw. This first table in my shop is uh, mostly used for breaking down materials and I have it set up so that I can do it pretty quickly. So I've got my track right here and my track saw right here ready to go. This hose uh, is universal and the, the plug kind of comes out. So I've got a bunch of other things like the domino and I have my sander in here and so that I can hook those up super quick. The other thing is I don't have much stored underneath the table so I can pass the track saw back and forth underneath. And I've got my sandpaper here along with my uh, sanding rolls. These are, these are basically drawer liners that stop the vibration of, of the wood when you're, when you're sanding it. Other quick access stuff is I've got all my quick grip clamps. These are super handy uh, to have easy access to basically whenever you're doing a glue up and you're, <laughs> you're just like covered in glue and you need to find one more clamp. This is really, really nice. I want to remove this and it's in the way, which happens every once in a while. It's just on a cleat, so it lifts up pretty easily and I can set it aside. The other thing is I've also labeled each one of my clamps with the the length of them so that if I need to know which ones they are, I find that when I'm looking from the top down, I can't really tell. So real quick, I wanted to talk about the track saw itself. This is probably one of the most valuable tools in my shop. I was able to stave off buying a big table saw for a long time because I had a track saw. So if you're looking into like starting a shop or 
uh, especially if you're running a shop kind of per, for profit, uh, this this is a really essential tool. It, it was expensive at the time, but it's super precise. I'm able to do a lot of cuts that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Like you can make cuts inside of panels because it plunges. You can make cuts at, at different angles and um, yeah, I know that this is an expensive tool. There are other brands out there that are a little bit cheaper, but I have really appreciated the investment in this and I use my track saw on just about every project. So from this table, it is a very short walk over to the table saw where I do a lot. <laughs> I do uh, all the sort of refinement. So that's the rough cutting. This is the more precise cutting. This table saw is a saw stop table saw. It is a 36 inch, uh, three horsepower. And I've built a couple custom additions to it, including my outfit table, which I have plans for, as well as my storage cabinet under here, which I also have plans for. This is on the mobile base. It's on the industrial mobile base, I think they call it. And so the whole thing rolls and all of it rolls with it, including the cabinet that's under here. I made this cabinet a couple years back, right when I bought the saw and it's been super handy. Basically I have all access to all of my push sticks, my accessories for the saw stop and uh, yeah, like extra brakes, all the wrenches and everything. And that's really close at hand. The next drawer down is a little bit more because I'm a filmmaker. I've got a whole bunch of camera equipment in here uh, and a little bit of spillover from, from the upper cabinet. And then the lower one, I mostly just use for saw blades. So I've got my dado stack here and then all the different saw blades that I use, including the saw blades for the bandsaw, which we'll talk about in a minute. So I also have quick access to my crosscut sled, which I use a ton. It's a really simple crosscut sled. The main thing that I like about it is its depth. It is 22 and a half inches deep, which is plenty to, to cut most sort of cabinet parts, nice and square. I've doubled up the front and the back because I've found them kind of weak over the years. And uh, and yeah, it's, it's, it's I think about three inches in the hand and then I've got a, an upper section here. I'll probably rebuild this at some point, although I really like this sled because it's super accurate, uh, but I'll probably rebuild it and do plans at some point. The other thing is the handle on this is been great because it's so heavy. I'm able to, to pick it up when I didn't, before I put the handle in it, this was a, a huge pain to use, but I find that I use it even more just because of this robust handle right here. So keep my hearing protection. These are isotunes. I keep my hearing protection up here. This is my dust mask, which I wear all the time. Uh, the Jimmy DiResta ice pick. I've got the Wixie digital angle finder. I've got a couple other angle finders and squares here. Uh, another square there. A couple of pencils in case I lose them in the shop. I've got five here. My safety glasses. And then of course my marking and measuring tool pouch, which usually lives on my hip. And also on this thing is my dust collection button right here. So when it's on, it's on my hip, I can pretty quickly just reach down, hit that button. I've got a tape measure right here. Um, this is one of the items in the giveaway. And uh, it's one of my favorite things in the shop is just having quick access to everything. This is kind of the painting finishes and you know just washing up area. Uh, I've got a whole collection of spray paint and a whole bunch of these these are like latex paint pots. If I need to uh, paint anything, pretty much any color, I like having access to it right here. Uh, I've got some rare, rarely used items up top. Uh, I keep my wood glue here. Uh, if you guys watch my pattern plywood videos, I go through quite a bit of wood glue. So, so most commonly I use Type Bond 1. That's my main go-to. There's Type Bond 2 up there if I need something a little bit more waterproof. And then I'll just buy a small thing of Type Bond 3 if it's going outside. I've got this uh, file cabinet, which I, I keep everything in. I just uh, found this on the street, I think, and then spray painted it red. It's full of, this one's my thinners and finishes. Uh, so I've got like tongue oil, teak oil. Uh, I've actually got a whole video on finishes. So if you want to know about all that stuff, go watch that video. There's all my stains and waxes and oils. Uh, I don't use stains very often, but for some reason they just tend to collect. I have a lot of them in here. Probably should get rid of a few of them. And then down here, kind of odds and ends, some white glues, some sprays, things like Super 77, uh, WD-40, all that odds and ends. And then at the very bottom, I've got all my uh, painting rolls and, and paint supplies. So 
I like, I really like these foam rollers. I go through these more often than most. Um, and then, you know, if I got to paint a wall or something like that. And then I store all of my paint roll tools over here, here. I've got access to first aid here, uh, as well as a, you know, washing station for all sorts of stuff. I've got brush cleaners and some more wood glue here. Just odds and ends. There's lots of different stuff that goes along with painting and cleanup. So it all just lives here. This is kind of just the messy corner and I let it just be messy and stay messy. Also got a whole bunch of the stickers. I need more surface area for, for putting the stickers on at some point. Um, but I do like trading stickers. So if you want to do a sticker swap, let me know in on, on Instagram or in the comments or something. Uh, let's see. Oh, tape. This is where I keep my tape. Pretty simple. It's just like small, medium, and large. And once they get too small, they drop to the next shelf pretty much on their own. This whole thing, this is dry erase. This is all dry erase. You may have seen me working on this in some videos. Um, I get questions about this a lot. I didn't shoot a video on uh, putting the dry erase into the, the garage door. Uh, I, I don't necessarily recommend it because it added a lot of weight to my garage door. I had to retension it, buy new springs. So it ended up actually costing quite a bit. This stuff is just, uh, I think it's like sh like really cheap shower material that they sell at, at big box stores. And there's there's styrofoam behind it, uh, solid, solid foam insulation. And then they're just kind of slipped into place. Um, which, you know, it's all right. They're, they're easily replaceable. It doesn't erase super well. You need to use like Windex to erase it, but it works pretty good. Around this corner, you can see I just keep levels and straight edges. Again, these are just quick to grab if I'm headed out the door. I use I use straight edges and squares quite a bit, and this was just an easy place to put them where they don't get damaged or dinged up at all. Uh, I've also got a framing square here, which this is just a drywall framing square. I'll use this when I break down sheets of plywood to, to draw that out. A couple of art pieces. Uh, this is from my, my good buddy, Sean McElroy. He gave this to me from one of his, uh, his art shows just to let me know that I'm great. And then up there is uh, from a carnival game that I, uh, the, a drawing group that I'm, I participate in called The Drunk. They made that for a, a carnival game that they were doing and, and I ended up taking it because I'm the only one who had enough space to, to hang it up afterwards. Uh, let's see, what else? We've got the... Seamless right here, which is uh, something that I did a couple couple months back and this has been super handy for photography. Like when I photograph uh, pieces of furniture, we also use it as a projection screen every once in a while. I've got three colors on here. I, I would love to have some bright colors too, so I may double this up. Uh, it took me a little bit to get this honed in and I will say that when I, I did that video, I was not an expert on the subject and I wish I knew a little bit more. I've changed the roles, I've reversed them so that they go the opposite direction and done a few odds and ends. I think I had the weights on upside down in the video, but it works. Hopefully people got the point across. Uh, I use this for thumbnail images quite a bit. And you know, if I have to speak in front of something, it's kind of nice to have just a clean background because there really isn't another clean background in the shop. Uh, we should talk about the giveaway. So I reached out to a bunch of the brands that I work with and asked them if they'd want to participate in the giveaway and they responded so well that I actually have three prize packs to give away. The first one is the ArborTech prize pack, which includes a power carving unit. There's also the Shaper prize pack, which has two sustainers in it, and the Rockler prize pack, which includes their precision miter gauge. I also asked Isotunes to help out and they're giving a pair of Isotunes to all three packs and I'm gonna be giving away some swag as well. So make sure you check out the links down below. All the rules and everything are down there. So big thank you to all 300,000 of you. It's, that's insane, I can't believe it. Really appreciate it. So check out the links down below. You'll find all the giveaway details and all the rules and stuff there. So let's carry on with the tour. So this table saw is awesome. I've had it for a couple years now and I, I really don't have any complaints. It is the saw stop table saw that has the brake cartridge in it. So I don't have to worry nearly as much about getting my fingers in the blade. I'm still treat it like a normal table saw, but that assurance has been awesome. So I keep a couple things on the top of the table saw. I've got a Shinwa ruler right here and it always lives here. This is a really accurate ruler that I found. It's only about 20 bucks. 
um, all the stuff that I'll mention is listed down below. But I also have the Jimmy DiResta pencil, which I use all the time, mostly with the crosscut sled to hold pe smaller pieces down. Um, it works as like a small push stick. Uh, in general, I really like this table saw. I don't really have any complaints about it. I do think that it needs some sort of outfeed support. I've been very happy with this, which was sort of an improvised design and uh, this just worked out great. This is 18 inches uh, off of the back of the saw, which some people have asked me why I like it to be that short. And the reason for that is because when I'm pushing, and imagine I have a push stick in my hand, when I push through the saw, it hits its center of gravity and it tips up and then I can remove it and pull the board away. If it was longer, I'd have to reach further out over the saw. And if you're ripping a whole bunch of materials, this is a really efficient way to do it. You just push it through and it lifts up, set it aside, cut another one. On the other side of the table saw, I have more storage. I have this uh, restored cabinet. I put out a video on this a while back. It's just a cheap cabinet that I got, but it's got lots of hardware that I don't use that frequently, but when I need it, I definitely need it. I also have my miter gauge here, which I use all the time. This is the Rockler Precision miter gauge with the miter gauge fence, and it's really handy. Uh, I've got my trash can over here, which is part of the reason that I didn't extend the, the outfeed table all the way to the end is because I like to be able to kind of chuck things over there uh, along with the scrap bucket, which is pretty essential as you cut thin scraps, you gotta have a place to put it. So those live right here. So this is my additional outfeed support if I need it. I don't really use it that often, but it does work. So you can see it's set at the same height. It's actually a little bit lower, which is intentional because I don't want it to hit. And so across all of here. So if I'm ripping a big four by eight sheet of plywood, that's pretty much the only time that I'm gonna be using it. And most of the times I break it down over there, but it's nice to have just in case. Of the work tables, this is probably the one that I'm at the most. Uh, this is my favorite space to work just because I, I feel like I have access to everything super quickly. So if I need to fire in some nails, I've got nail guns right here. If I need to chop something down, I've got my chop saw behind me. I've got loads of different tools and equipments in all these drawers. I also have access to my glue super quickly. And this is really, it's an assembly table is mostly what it's turned into. And um, I, I'm really happy with the, the build of this. I made it before I was shooting YouTube videos, but it's been such a handy, sturdy workbench. Eventually, I think I'll probably put out plans on it. Um, so it's also, this, it's the same size as the white table. It's uh, three feet by six feet and um, it's, it's built with two by four construction that are half lapped over each other, kind of like a torsion box, which keeps it nice and flat. I've got multiple two by fours that are glued together and then they have sort of bridle joints in here that it just makes this thing so sturdy and strong. The top is made of black melamine. This one's also melamine, it's white melamine. I, in hindsight, would have just put black on all the surfaces. I like it because it's just not quite as reflective. Um, I find the, the white is a little harsh, especially shooting video. Um, but this is this has just been a beast. I've been using it forever. It's taken a lot of abuse. I thought I would have to replace the top of it by now, and I haven't. It's you know, all you all you have to do is scrape it down to clean it off, and it's you can get any glue off of this you want. You can even wax the surface. I, I do that every once in a while, but really all finishes, all paint, it just scrapes right off and keeps on kicking. I'm, I, I love this workbench. All right, so this is my hand tools area. This is the far right side. We're gonna go along this whole bank and just talk about all the different things that go on in here. I like the Adam Savage first order retrievability idea where everything is, is accessible quickly. You can see it. And this is actually based on his design um, that he put out and tested. I'll put, we'll post a link to the video. Um, but I can grab whatever I need super quick. And I've got drills, I've got all my screwdrivers, my hammers, my uh, sharps, so all the different uh, razor blades that I use and stuff. I've got drill bits and uh, hand tools down here, knives, uh, vice grips hanging out behind here. I've got my hand, the palm router, 
all the all of my screws pretty much just everything that I grab on a regular basis that uh, you want to be able to grab quick and put away quickly. Everything needs to have a home. And uh, and so th this has been great. I, I had it on wheels with the idea that I would roll it over to my workspace as I was working on it, but it, it just eventually sort of found a home. That's kind of the way that this shop has worked that I, I built something and then I moved around the shop and then eventually this was like, oh, this is the most convenient spot for it. So I've lived here for a, a number of years at this point and, and I really like it a lot. It's also sloped back so that I showed you before uh, with the chop saw, I can get a board past here and, and it doesn't get in the way. Moving over, I've got my charging station. I use mostly Milwaukee tools in here. I have a couple Ryobi as well. And so there's the dedicated charging station here. And then there's another Ryobi charger that doesn't quite have a home yet that's over, over on this side. Uh, moving down, I've got my pattern plywood toolbox, which is it's just full of pattern plywood scraps at this point. I think this is gonna go away eventually. I really want a home for a lathe and that's probably what's gonna go here, uh, just a small lathe. So, um, but I just haven't had time to, to rearrange and plan that out. These are my glue up squares. I built them myself. I've talked about them before and I really wanna do a video on this. It's just made out of scrap plywood. These are super handy. Uh, I've got them wrapped in plastic tape so they don't, they don't get glued to the surface of stuff. You'll see this in a lot of my videos and they just, they just live here because they're easy to access when I go over to the table. Um, if, I'm, if I'm doing a glue up, I don't wanna have to walk very far. So those, those live right here, right next to my chop saw. The chop saw is one of the only tools that isn't hooked up to dust collection. I hope to change that at some point, but for right now, it just, it, it has a hood, which kind of keeps the dust down, but eventually I'd love to put like a vacuum system in here or run my, uh, my dust collection system up to it. But for right now, it, it doesn't have it. So I also have electrical over here. Uh, I really like this. This is a 50 foot long electrical uh, line and I can just pull it over the table as I need it. So few of my tools these days actually use power that I, I don't use it that often, but there's occasionally like a hot glue gun or something like that and, and I need to pull it out. I also have like a little hook here because I found that as I was pulling it across the room, it was getting in the way. So I can hook it down below here. Um, there's a lot of little improvised things in my shop where I just quickly needed a place for stuff to live. That's just where, where they've ended up living. Like I've got Jimmy Duresta's blade over here, which is, <laughs> it just lives there. I used it for uh, scraping glue at one point and I thought it might be good for that. Um, but yeah, every once in a while I, I, I find a use for that. I've got, um, this is the air filter system right here. So I've just got the remote. You can, turn it on and off from, from here. It doesn't, it doesn't get lost because it has a home. And then as I'm moving over, we're starting to get into the hardware section. So um, a lot of that's hand tools. This is where I keep all of my odds and ends screws, all the brass stuff, all the just random things that I need. I find myself reaching for the small screws bin a lot uh, because you know I've got that big bin of, of like deck screws, but oftentimes when assembling furniture, you need something a little bit smaller. And these bins are a collection of, I think these are Home Depot bins, the HDX ones up here. These are Harbor Freight bins, uh, which I know other people have had problems with. I haven't had any issues with. And then the lower ones are the Stanley ones, which are more expensive, definitely better built. I only have two of those. And the bottom one, I just keep empty if I'm ever working on a job site so I can fill it up. A lot of times I've built a number of Ikea kitchens over the years and they come with all this hardware. It's good to get them organized. So I use one of these bins for that. You know, the labeling system is just something that works for me. It's color coded. It's not really coded as anything. It's just that I recognize the color now. So like I know that my wafer nuts and, um, and bolts are in this container and I just recognize it as blue. Uh, I almost don't even read the, the labels anymore. Sockets, uh, my socket sets live here mostly because they're the same kind of uh, bin. It's not that I really use sockets all that often, but I had this little tiny gap here and it fit in perfectly right there. And then um, this I do use all the time is my 50 foot air hose. So this can stretch all the way outside. I can do construction projects outside because it's so long and it really quickly rolls up so I'm not tripping on it. 
So moving further down, I've got scraping tools, all sorts of random hand tools that just don't kind of fit in there. Um, I've got my sandpaper here and underneath I've got all of my air, air equipment. So what hooks up to this air hose is the California Air Tools uh, 10 gallon compressor. I covered this in my tool tips video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you can go check that out, but it's a great system. It's super quiet. I had the little pancake for a long time and it's the loudest thing ever. It scared the crap out of me every time it turned on. This is so much better. Uh, so I've got a 23 grit gauge nailer. I've got a 16 gauge nailer. Those are the main two that I use. Then I've, I don't remember the last time I used this 18 gauge nailer. It came with that pancake compressor. And then I have a stapler, uh, which I use mostly on outdoor projects or backs of cabinets. This works well on the back, back of cabinets as well. Uh, so yeah, those all live in here. And as you can see, I can access them really quickly. Uh, you know, just grab them, go over to the table, put them back. And of course, right next to it is all of the, the nails and stuff. So on this side, I have all the different sizes labeled on here. And I like to have a full set of, of 18 gauge because this is my most common size nail. And then I've added tape here. The tape actually indicates the size of the nail. So if I lay that on the tape, I can match it up really quickly. And and the reason for that is because a lot of times I'll just end up with, with one little thing like this. And I'm like, I don't know which one this goes into. So I can just match it up super quick and drop it into the tray, close it up and I'm ready to go. Well, I'm start, starting to get into the drill press area. So this is all drill press accessories, things that uh, I have quick access to. Again, it's like all about having it close at hand so that I'm not, I'm not opening drawers to access this stuff. I just know exactly where it is. I have my main Forstner bits. They live on this side. I just took the plastic case that they came in and screwed it to the wall. And so I've got Brad Point drill bits as well as Forstner bits up there and a couple more Forstners down here too. Whenever I go to an estate sale or a garage sale, I always buy spare drill bits. Usually they, they'll either give them to you or um, sell them for pretty cheap. And I don't sort them. I just kind of sort them by small, medium, and large. And I've found this has saved me dozens of times when I'm just, I don't have the right drill bit in my shop and I don't want to drive to Home Depot or whatever and buy the correct size. So I just, I just hunt through the bin and, and I can usually find the size that I need. So those live back behind here. The drill press itself is, is also a, a garage sale find. Uh, and this has been an awesome drill press. I've been looking for one this size for a long time. Uh, I don't like the full pedestal drill, drill presses just because I, I, I usually don't use the space down below. I, I can't think of a time where I've actually needed that much depth to drill something out. But for the stuff that I do, this is plenty of depth. It's a really strong uh, machine. I had the Royobi smaller version a while back. If you saw some of my earlier videos, it just wasn't quite as strong. I could, I could stall it out on, on some, some uh, drilling practices. So it's got a nice depth stop. It's, it's got all the bells and whistles that I need and, and it's been a great drill press. You can see I, I sunk it down a little bit so that, uh, so that I can get, again, this is for my chop saw so I can get a board that runs across here. I've also got a whole bunch of additional storage down below. So hole saws and drill indexes. This is like what you would see at an old hardware store. And see my, uh, uh, bench cookies are in there with all the bench cookie accessories, some corner clamps as well. And below that, I have more regular access accessories. I've got my beadlock system. I've got the uh, doweling uh, and then some, some hardware for, for building jigs and stuff, which is super handy. So up here, I've got a bunch of woodworking books that I can, I can look at, you know, when I take lunch breaks and stuff like that and go through all the different joints and joinery and, and um, you know, get inspiration. I've also got a bunch of sketchbooks down here. These are my old sketchbooks so I can reference old drawings and designs if I ever run out of ideas. And then there's also uh, storage for dominoes and jigs. And I, I like these Talenti containers because they just, they're, they're, they've got a good lid on them. They're nice and flat. They're, you know, store a whole bunch of stuff. And I like, I like to eat the ice cream too. So I've got clamps here. These are made by Armor Tools and they 
they're auto adjusting. So if I put them down on the drill press, you know, depending on how tall the item is, you can always lock this thing down, which I find I don't want to do. I used to use C clamps for this and you'd have to adjust them for like an hour to get them just right. These are way simpler to use and I just have two of them that live right up there. And of course, this is uh, this is the best wood storage that I have. I, I really like this a lot. I divide it by species. So this is like construction lumber. This is all walnut. This is oak and maple. And then I've got poplar and alder, I think, down here exotics down here and then this will be like mdf and plywood that are that are longer lengths bigger plywood sheets sit up above and then along this whole area here i've got uh you know plywood scraps that are shorter and more square so as long as i can see it i i will know to use it if i can't see it if it's if it's stuck away inside of a cabinet or something i'm, I'm just never going to use it so i go through this fairly often i you know it's funny with the shop projects i tend to build them when i have too much material around here so a lot of these these built-in pieces are you could tell they look like they're made of scrap because they are they're just made from whatever i had on hand like i think this is oak plywood from the big book case that i built this is birch plywood this is some cheap like osb no um uh, cdx ply just whatever i have in the shop when I have it, that's when I'm like, all right, I'll build some shop projects out of it, get rid of some of this, this excess. And I think I'm about ready to do that again. The biggest storage that I have is, is up top here. This is for longer lengths of, of lumber, usually solid wood. And um, it can store a whole bunch. I put it in really early on when I, when I got this shop. It's one of the first things that I built and installed. It has a whole bunch of lengths of walnut that came from a job that were like 12, 14 feet long and it was really hard to find a storage spot for it. So I built these. They're sort of loosely based on John Peter's design for a lumber rack and it's just sandwiched pieces of plywood with a two by two in the center and then a two by two that runs up the back and it's all screwed into the studs of the wall. Super strong. I've never had any concern about stuff falling down and um, mostly I just try not to overload it so that nothing's gonna sort of slide off as I'm, as I'm rifling through. One thing that I would like is some devoted ladder system. I, I joked for a long time that I was gonna put in a library ladder that just could go back and forth to, to pull things down. So I mentioned dust collection when I was talking about the chop saw, which is not hooked up to dust collection, but I do have a pretty robust dust collection system. This is the, the Clearview Cyclone CV1800. It is a cyclone separator. So it's a two stage dust collection system. There are filters back here that filter out the air, but most of it, most of the sawdust actually collects into this, this oil drum at the bottom here. And honestly, I don't, I don't have to replace this it's like nine months between dumping out the sawdust. So uh, it lasts for a really long time. And it's a great system. I, I, I've got a full video on, on how I installed all the ducting and everything. So you can go check that out if you want more detail. Um, the one thing that I don't really use, I've got four drops on it. The first one is a floor sweeper. I haven't actually found it that useful. Um, I think I may swap it over to a downdraft table or try and run it over to the chop saw later on, but really just stays closed. The next one over, however, gets used a ton. This one goes to the router lift and the, uh, the sander. And I've made a couple alterations to it since the video. The, the main one is that I moved the hose up to this higher point here. I kind of like it because even if I don't get all the sawdust, I can kind of sweep it off using this thing. Um, I think I, at, further down the line, I'll, I'll work on this and make it a little bit nicer but but so far it works it works really well i've got the blast gates back here which are easy to access and then the third drop goes over here and this is also multifunctional it works for my bandsaw right here and then the other one is a quick connect it's a rockler quick connect so i can connect it to a floor sweeper i can connect it into my thickness planer which i usually roll out oh it's locked there we go so I can roll out here, connect in here, and uh, it's on a long flex hose. So that's 
The third drop, this, the fourth drop, just goes to my table saw and it ends there. It's got a lot of power. I haven't, I haven't found myself being like, oh, I wish I bought a bigger model or something a little bit more powerful. It definitely does the job that it that it's supposed to do uh, for this size shop. So as long as we're over here, we might as well talk about all the different tools. So again, my philosophy is to put everything I can on on wheels because uh, part of it is is when I'm filming, it's really nice to bring these tools out with me and get better shots of them. But I also find that like if I'm working with larger materials, I can roll this out and I've, I've got a bigger area to work in. This kind of quadrant of my shop is intended to be multifunctional. Sometimes a piece of furniture just lives here for a little while while I'm putting finish on it. I'll set up a folding table or something like that. Or, you know, all these different units will roll out here. I also need to have access to this back corner uh, for all of my clamp storage. I've got all of my uh, bar clamps back here, which I use for big glue ups along with some camera gear. This is a shop light that I use for uh, construction when I'm on job sites. A couple of saw horses that fold up here and then some, some lighting for, for shooting video and stuff. I also have storage in here. I made a video on this. I think I'm gonna probably just build a playlist of all the videos that I'm <laughs> mentioning in here because there's lots of them. Um, this is This is more tool storage. I built this a little over a year ago. This was the first pattern plywood tambour piece that I made. It's still working great for those who've been asking if it's held up, if it's, uh, you know, gotten locked up or anything like that. It's, it, it hasn't. It's great. And this is what I use for storage of, uh, like, dust-free storage for all my camera gear and stuff that I need to quick access to. You know, I've got my pull saws over here. I've got my job site bag here, extra sandpaper, my hand planes, just all the odds and ends. I've got hole saws, my fine um, multi-tool, and rasps over here. Um, it's been a great unit to, to have here, and yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I would change anything about that design, to be honest. So over here, I've got a bunch more storage of random tools and stuff. These just didn't really have a home for a while, and I got enough scrap <laughs> built up that I could, I could build this out. I made these modular, they're on uh, cleats, so I can lift them and move them if I ever wanna reorganize the shop, but I've been really happy with this location. So I've got, uh, this is my ArborTech gear right here, so all my carving equipment. Um, this is just the, the container for my, the sustainer for my uh, track saw, as well as my Shaper Origin, the sustainer for a whole bunch of Shaper Origin parts, and the Shaper workstation. So I mentioned this a little bit, but this is my router table, and uh, I actually built all the storage for this. There is a video and some plans on all this storage. The router lives inside of here. It's on a router lift, and uh, it's built around the Rockler Pro Lift system. I've got access to everything super quickly, including drawers full of, you know, setup bars and uh, all the odds and ends that I use with the router. I find that it accumulates a lot of, a lot of parts. I've also got additional uh, routers in the bottom, palm router and, you know, a plunge router as well. Over here is probably the second oldest tool in the shop is this rigid oscillating spindle sander. I don't really use it as a spindle sander, but I do use it as a belt sander. And uh, I know so many people who have this tool. I find myself using it on just about every project. I don't know how it, it's so useful, but it just, every, every, every project requires like one little thing that I gotta sand up to a line or something like that. So you see this a lot in my videos and I'm just hoping that this tool doesn't break because I don't think they make these anymore. This is a great tool. If you could find one used, definitely go for it. This has got to be like 15 years old. Over here is the Woodmaster, which if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I've had a frustrating time with this tool. It is sort of a hybrid tool. It works as a drum sander and a thickness planer as well as a shaper and some other stuff that you can do with it. It's an industrial grade tool, uh, but I haven't found it very user friendly. Uh, it's nice because it has a big wide bed on it, um, but I've, I'm, I'm still not sold on it. I'm, I, I'm, I may sell this tool, but for right now, it's the, it's the one that I've got and it's been, it's been okay. So over here is the Jet 14 inch bandsaw. I've had this for a number of years and it's, it's been a, a trooper. It's worked really well and I've, I've upgraded a couple things. I've got a detensioner 
on here that I use, and I've also added on the uh, the bandsaw fence from Craig. But um, yeah, I, I'm just starting just starting to outgrow this thing because I'm doing a lot more resawing these days, and I find that I kind of need a little bit more power and a little bit more height. So this may change in the not too distant future, but for right now. It's very functional, it's a great saw, and definitely when I bought this at the time, it was a big splurge, and it's gotten almost a decade worth of use, so really like this saw a lot. This is probably the least filmed portion of my shop. This is my carving workbench. It's where I make art pieces. I do a lot of detailed carving, which I haven't featured much on my channel. I'm hoping to change that soon. If you saw the video where I made the workbench for Ashley, I based her design off of this because it really like this workbench. It's it's got everything right in front of me so that I can I can swap out bits and stuff. I've got all my uh, carving chisels and gouges and knives as well as a flex shaft carver. This is a Fordham and all these bits are I can swap out really quickly. I've even got spare handles that I can swap in as I need. This is a great space for, for sculpting. It just doesn't really come up a lot in the furniture making. But again, I'd like to do some sculptures on the channel in the not too distant future. So you might be seeing this a little bit more. Another point I wanted to make about this space is that it's just built up organically. I really have just been rolling things around and gradually I'll work on an area and just kind of feel my way through it. I know that that workbench used to be on that wall. My table saw used to be in the middle of the shop. Uh, everything's shifted around at some point and they've sort of settled and it's taken me about five years to do it. As I bring in new tools, things get reorganized again and again, but I'm super happy with the layout at this point. Again, that, that first order retrievability is super important to me to find things really quickly, to move fast through the space. That, that's the essential quality of this shop that I've been working on for a long time. Other thing that I want to mention is that when it comes to buying tools, again, I, I've bought a lot of used tools of, over the years, started small and gradually worked my way up to bigger and bigger tools. For example, the table saw I bought after remodeling a friend's house. So I'll often use jobs to buy the tools that I need. And that's how I, I've leveled up this shop over the years. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tour and a big thank you again. 300,000 subscribers is insane to me. I really appreciate it. Make sure you check out the giveaway down below and big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. You've been supporting me for a long time. Really appreciate it and I'll catch you on the next one.